That's enough. All right, folks, the show's over. Break it up. Are you all right, Dad? Yeah. yeah. I thought I told you, no fighting. He was pushing around that woman. That woman happens to be his wife. Leave it to you to go poking into a family quarrel. Dan, when I left Mason City, I didn't do it because I hoped you'd follow me. But I did. For what? I kind of think that would be obvious. Prove that you love me? Well, now that you mention it... Oh, to find out if I still love you. Dan, that's never been the question. Em, Em, you knew what I was when you married me. Yes. Yes, I did. But I was still young enough to think I could learn to live with it. And I was just old enough not to want to wait any longer to find out. Em, why ten years? Why'd you wait ten oh. years to leave? <gasps> You'd leave in the morning, and the fear would come. But at least when you got home at night, it went away. So after a while, I got so I could live with it. It was like living with a third person in the house. I got used to having it there. Well, this then. Why this? Three months ago, in that fight with the Carsons. Oh, Em, that never should have happened. I mean, I thought I had him covered. I didn't know there's somebody coming in from behind. And he nearly caved the side of your head in. They brought you home, please. Honey, I pulled through. You make it sound so simple. For three weeks, he laid there, not talking, not moving. And there was nothing to stop the fear, even when you were home. And the door was shut, and it was Frank out on the street instead of you. The fear was with me. Honey. Dan. Not all of our love, not, not all of our love was enough to end it. It just wasn't enough. Em. I didn't realize. I mean, if I'd have known, I... Oh, Dad. Would it have made any difference? It's changed now. I'm here. No badge, no rounds. Just us. The two of us. That's for today. And tomorrow. And next week. And a long time. Well, now all the people on the street can look in and see how the porters are doing. <laughs> well, let them look. By tomorrow, all they'll be able to see is an empty room. Yeah, hey, listen, by the way, did you arrange with George to pick up this furniture? Oh, yes, I did. Uh, he can't freight it until the first, but he'll, he'll hold it for us till then. Okay. I'll get it. Hey. Hello, Dan. I thought maybe I'd find you here. Hello, Frank. Can I come in and talk a minute? Oh, of course. Come on in. Well, Frank. Good evening, Frank. It's good to see both of you back here again. Yeah, well, I, I, uh... I wish we were staying longer. Yeah, so do I. Dan, this isn't easy to say. I've been talking to some of the townspeople and the mayor and... Well, all of us, we'd like to ask you to take your old job back. Now, they'd be willing to raise the pay. Oh, Frank, has never made a matter of pay. And you look to be doing a good job. Well, it's just too big for me, Dan. I found that out this last month. Now, with these three outfits in town, I... Well, I'm a good deputy, but I'm afraid that's it. Frank. You know why Dan left, don't you? Well... Yes, ma'am, but 
he's back now, and I figured with me and, and another deputy, if he figured he needed one. In other words, you'd guarantee his safety? Dan? Frank, I've decided on a new life. Yeah, well, I owed it to the town to try. Well, look, why don't you hire more men? There aren't that many around that want the job. At least not the ones that measure up. Dan, could you give me a hand temporarily? I mean, with this mob in town, I'm... I'm sorry, Frank. I mean, we've got a lot more to do here, and we're leaving tomorrow. I'd like to help you. Believe me, I really would, but... I have a suggestion for you. Whenever there is more than one outfit in town, I used to insist that the men leave their guns back in camp. Well, maybe that's the difference between us, Dan. You could insist. I can only ask. from the stage line. I uh, just wondered if your husband was here. No, he's not. I stopped by his office. He wasn't there either. He's probably out making his rounds. Uh, well, I just wanted to give him this money. Maybe you could give it to him for me. Money? Yes. Uh, he has some wages coming from the ranch. The uh, foreman wanted to make sure that he gets it. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you. I'm going to be on 11 o'clock stagecoach. You won't be seeing him before you leave? Just didn't work out, that's all. Mrs. Porter, your husband tried very hard. Oh, I know that. I saw how tired he was. Well, it just wasn't from the work. It's, well, it's hard to see someone who's half his age, do a job better than he can. <laughs> that fight you had didn't make things any easier for him. That's right. Well, the trouble between us, we... Uh, we were able to straighten that out. Well, I'm very glad. I wish he had as much success with the trouble between us. We, we were able to straighten things out because... Well, we understood each other. Oh! I suppose you think I don't understand. I suppose he told you it was all my fault. No, 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 ma'am. He, he just, no, he just said he quit the law, and uh, that was all there was to it. He, he wasn't looking back, and, uh, and he wasn't griping. Well, he never does. He just goes out and does his job, and nothing else interferes. That's right. He goes out and does a lousy, thankless job that he doesn't get paid enough money for, and nobody cares if he gets killed or not. And to top it all off, his wife decides she can't take him, so she walks out on him. And he gives up the only other thing that meant anything to him. Just to get you back. I'm sorry, Mrs. Porter. It wasn't any of my business. But I can see why he picked a job over you. You'd do the same thing. You and him. Neither of you could realize what it's like for me. Well, maybe I never could. But I know Dan thought about it. Or he wouldn't have left. No, I think the trouble is... you never once thought what it was like for him. <laughs> 